This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 1272 of Horse Tip Daily, your almost everyday morsel of helpful hints, useful facts, and practical techniques for horse folks. Brought to you today by Dr. Rose's Remedies. Greetings, horse people. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip is an excerpt from the monthly endurance episode on Horses in the Morning, right here on Horse Radio Network. It features Karen Chatton along with Dr. Bullock, and they chat about the signs of heat stress in horses and ways to keep your horse from overheating. And we'll get right to our tip after this from Dr. Rose's Remedies. Dr. Rose's Remedies Skin Treatment Salve and Spray are 100% all-natural products. They are anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antiviral, and antifungal. Dr. Rose's are made with all human-grade ingredients and are safe and effective for treatment for all manner of cuts and scrapes on your horse. And Dr. Rose's is the must-have product here at the Horse Radio Network headquarters to keep PT scooters, delicate white pasterns, free from dew poisoning and scratches. Ask for Dr. Rose's at your local tax store or feed supplier or visit them online at drrosesremedies.com. That's drrosesremedies.com. Do we have Dr. Julie Bullock back with us again, and she is an endurance rider and an endurance ride veterinarian. Uh, Welcome back to the show, Julie. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me. Exactly. Okay, so let's maybe just have you tell us a little bit about if our horse is starting to experience heat stress, what are those signs that we need to look for? Definitely you need to look for um, an increased heart rate. You know, failure to recover is a big sign. Um, Increased respiration rate. And for some horses that don't normally pant, that are panting, um, taking their temperature. If they're over 103, they're they're, they're definitely heat stressed. Some horses will, uh, several years ago, we had a really, really cool spring. We had no heat um, to speak of. And we had some horses come to the Old Dominion, and they were all from the upper northeast, from like Pennsylvania. And they had to do a really large climb, and it was really, really hot and humid. And I saw, I treated four horses that day. They're all cramped in their intercostal muscles in their rib cage just from panting because they had not, you know, utilized those muscle groups training because they hadn't you know, had that, that same kind of challenge. All right. So let's see. So um, things to look for. Definitely a horse is hot. A lot of times they won't eat. Um, you know, say you already passed, say you actually passed the vetting and you went over to your crewing area and your, your horse is just looking kind of miserable. Then you do need to recheck his heart rate, check his temperature, make sure that he didn't heat back up on you. And then, mm-hmm. you know, you want that, you don't want that uh, look in their eyes or, you know, if the flies are hanging on their face and they don't care, um, that's not a good sign. Um, you know, definitely all the hydration. I think that we should all be able to basically vet our own horses. We should be able to check our mucous membranes, see if they're dry, make sure our capillary refill is, is you know, two seconds or jugular um, mm-hmm. gut sounds. Sometimes, a lot of times your gut sounds will go away when they're hot because the horse is going to circumvent blood flow to other areas. So it's going to, you know, it's going to take care of its brain you know, it's going to take care of its, you know, other areas of its body, but it's going to prioritize them. And then eventually once it starts getting a certain amount of, of um, heat, heat exhaustion or dehydration, then it has to start, you know, throwing things out of the boat, like, okay, well, I, I, I don't have enough to go you know, to my gut, so I'm going to send it over here, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And so it's important to, you know, keep the horse in shade as much as possible and and to in keep cool, cooling them. Yes. Try to get them out of the sun, keep them in the shade, keep cooling them um, during the during their rest period, absolutely. Um, and then when you're competing them, when you're out on trail, try to keep them cool. Um, the, there is the only downside sometimes to 
shade and humidity is it's, it's difficult for the for the water to evaporate off the horse. Right. So on the West Coast, it, everything evaporates really quickly. And it, it doesn't mean those horses are any less dehydrated because they really aren't. And you can see the salt just accumulate on their bodies. Uh-huh. On the East Coast, the horses never, never dry. They never dry. They stay wet the entire time because that water can't evaporate and that holds the heat in. So it's really important once that heats up to keep exchanging it and pulling it off and trying to and take that hot water off. Right, right. And, and I found some neat little, um, like, squeegees at the dollar store. The, they're yeah. just, like, the perfect size. They're, like, 10 inches wide, and they're they're perfect for, you know, scraping the water off of the horse. And, and you can clip them right onto your bucket, which makes it handy. They're, so they're, they're, you buy these. Yeah, yeah. Pull it squeegees and being aggressive with the volume of water, if you have it available, that you're putting on. You know, like I, I'll see people take a sponge and it's kind of like kind of like dabbing the horses. Like, no, you need to get in there. I use scoops. I use like laundry detergent scoops or cat litter uh-huh. scoops and I buckets and I pour the water on so I can right. get on their fat. So for me, it's like NASCAR. I come in. I mean, and that's just because I think my attitude is that practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. So even if I have a young horse and I'm in no particular hurry. I'm still going to get in there and do it the same way I always, whether I'm trying to win or just trying to finish. I, I try to keep my, you know, my pit crewing the same. Get in, get my tack off, get, you know, get the horse cooled off, blah, blah, blah. Because um, mm-hmm. otherwise we're trying to, we, you know, it's easy to fall into some kind of complacency and um, rather than stay at a certain level. Right, right. Well, this has been really useful information. Um We appreciate having you here, Julie. Thank you so much. Well, there you have it. You can find links to today's guests, as well as lots more tips at horsetipdaily.com. This podcast was made possible through the generous support of Dr. Rose's Remedies and listeners like you. Learn how you can help support Horse Radio Network programming and qualify for auditors-only perks by going to horsetipdaily.com and clicking on the Become an Auditor banner. This is Coach Jen, and I'll be back again soon with another tip. So until then, go ride your horse. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements made by guests on the Horse Tip Daily. Please use your own judgment when listening to the tips on this show. <laughs>